same to me. All right, so 2013 comes along about, I guess around 2011, Lionsgate says, let's do a remake of the Leatherface. Okay, so we've already done a remake of what, uh, Nightmare on Arm Street. We've done a remake of Halloween. We've done a remake of, of uh, uh, did I already say Nightmare? Yeah, I already said Nightmare. Okay, so we did Halloween, Nightmare on Street. We've done a remake of uh, uh, Friday 13th. So we've done three remakes. So what's left? <laughs> Leatherface. What can we make? What can we, make? <laughs> what, what can we drag out from the thing? So uh, there was another company that wanted to do this. They didn't do it. Lionsgate took it over. So they said, we're going to do three movies, but we're going to do them out of sequence. So this is their thought. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, basically, they got high and thought about this one night. Let's, <laughs> instead of doom in order, dude, let's like doom out of sequence. And I think the idea was so when they did a remake, people say, well, it's not just a remake anymore. And so they, what they decided to do, here's what they're doing. This is my theory and what I'm seeing that they're doing. All right. So the first one is going to be what happens after Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So it's supposed to be the actual sequel. It's called Texas Chainsaw. Got it? All right, so the next one is Leatherface, which is the prequel to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I'm assuming that the third one is going to be the actual remake in the lines with the new rendition of the character. So they're redoing the character, basically, to make him a little bit scarier. Yeah. All right, so I'll go over the 2013 real quick. It's a power crap. It's basically this supposed to be the sequel to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like I said, it's called Texas Chainsaw. The problem is, this is 2013 when this came out. Do you know what the biggest scary movies at this time are? Uh, paranormal. Uh, what's the other one? The uh, where the scary house and the live video films. Uh, paranormal Activity. The other one is what? Well, anyways, Ghost in the House. Whatever. Basically, ghost stories and ghost mansions are really Annabelle creations. Annabelle. Uh, you know, those things are really the, the, the Hell House. Uh, all these things are the big movies when they release this. So what do they do? They make a dumb independent slasher film. I mean, it's just like, now you got to understand, I'm a big, I watch these independents. One thing I give about, two things I'll give you about independents. Uh, you're not going to be surprised what you're seeing. And then number two, they have the best dang music you can imagine. Independent horror films, I mean, have some of the best music you can imagine because they can't afford to pay, like, professional artists. So you get, like, these independent bands you never heard of, and they make these awesome soundtracks. So that's about the best thing you get out of an independent horror film. So with um, this one, I've, it's like, it feels very independent -y, but it's like... Instead of doing something creative, because here's the whole idea. Here's the premise of this one. Okay, so it's supposed to be the sequel after the girl jumps out the window, right? And then she gets picked up by the um, truck driver. No, 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 she jumps in the back of the truck. I'm sorry. So she gets jumps back in the back of the truck, and thus ends the movie, right? All right, so now, so we're to assume in this starting out that she goes, gets the cops. The cops show up. And one thing they did was really unique is they have like where she crashed out the window. So the windows crash. Grandpa is there. They've added some characters to the family, it seems like. And and it's more it's more like a hippie commune, the, the Sawyer family farm, basically, uh, to uh, give it this kind of different feel to it. So Grandpa's there. Uh, Leatherface is given a name by Jeb. That's his name. Uh, so, a couple. These are a couple of new things that they've introduced at the beginning, and you find this out with the police showing up. So, um, there is a child that is taken away from all everything that happened because the police goes and shoots the place up for, you know, killing these kids, right? And so. 
that to establish this so you think, well, wouldn't I show more empathy to these kids that just got killed? Now they try to focus more empathy on this family. Oh, bless their heart, they were just defending their home. You know, that's what it really starts out. I mean, and that's the way it ends too because um, we'll go into the goofs because basically, so the girl that they, the baby is the baby that they take from this, uh, you know, from Leather uh, Leatherface's family, the Sawyer family. So they take the baby and the baby grows up and she inherits this big mansion from her grandmother. And so I'm thinking, you know, here's an opening because, like I said, the paranormal activity films are really big at this time. I'm thinking, well, maybe they're going to try to do a ghost story thing and try to sneak that in. Oh, no, that would be too good. So they basically do the whole slasher thing. And then at the same time, they want you to feel sorry for the boar dang Sawyer family and all this crap. And then you really kind of feel like they're starting a... a um, uh, a sort of Hatfoys, Hatfields and McCoy thing between the police officers are kind of the Hatfields and the Sawyer family's McCoy. You know, it's like it's a family feud between the police and between the Sawyer family. So there's no really heroes. They're both just a family that's fighting each other. And it is just... It's horrendous because uh, there's nothing really new and it really makes you angry. Because they kind of make Leatherface into like an anti-hero at the end. Yeah. That's really weird. It is weird. so weird because like the cop like lets Leatherface loose on the mayor and just lets it go and let the girl take care of him. So she now she has this uh, big house that she's inherited in her family. And then Jeb, who is Leatherface, is in the basement. Okay. I watched it once. I tried to watch it again. I couldn't. There's dumb mistakes like if she picks up she picks up the newspaper and it says the same date as when the police massacre happens because at the beginning of the film there's a massacre of the entire house, right? Of the family mm -hmm. to actually massacre. The Texas massacre is not Leatherface who killed these innocent teenagers as you saw in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The massacre is the police officers shooting up the Sawyer family for doing it. Yeah. Okay. And the, the big mistake in the film is she opens up the newspaper and it's the same date as the police massacre. Now, if you know anything about newspapers, you would not have the story the exact same day. <laughs> So, right. plot hole number one. Not only that, yeah. but you said it was the police massacre was the same day as the massacre of the kids? That's what supposedly. Well, then that would mean that it took the police a year to find them? It's... No, I'm saying the goof is... you. If you print a newspaper out, it takes a while for a newspaper to be printed. So technically, right. the newspaper should have had the day after of the massacre. Oh, right. It's so stupid because it's closed cliche. But see, that's the whole thing is they want you to have so empathy for the Sawyer family and that Leatherface, bless his heart, was just misunderstood. You know, he, you know, he's cause his. <sighs> that's a feud between this these two families that's what they're trying to do with this series because it kind of continues in the next one so that ends I, mean, I could go into some more details of how dumb this film is um like in 2000 like i said this is done in 2013 when annabelle and all these other films are become really popular and scary and like i said this has still got that same see like if you watch the remake in 2003 that's kind of justifiable. That's 10 years earlier. Okay, I can sit there. Oh, yeah, that makes sense because that film, that genre was becoming popular again because you had Scream. You had all these other films in the late 90s coming out. And uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer. Uh, all these films, Valentine's Day. All these films were coming popular again. 
So I can justify the 2003 remake for that, but I can't forgive you 10 years earlier doing that. 10 years later, I'm sorry, for doing that. It's 10 years later. Get with the program. All right, and you're doing that same thing, and then at the same time making Leatherface into a good guy. I mean, this whole thing just, I mean, it was twisted. I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea they were going with it, and I could go into the politics of it, but I won't because there's a lot of things that if certain people watch it, they would go like, really? Really? <laughs> Is this what you're trying to do? Um, but anyways, that's that film. It was terrible. I, like I said, I only could watch it once. I usually watch these films like two or three times to try to get an idea. I was done with it. And like I said, for 2013, you could have made it scarier. You could have done so many things that you could do. Like I said, if they made the ha mansion that she inherited haunted or something like that, that would make more sense. It would give you a little bit something. You know what I'm saying? But this... Right. I yeah, but you. 10 years later, you're doing the whole slasher thing. All of, yeah, like you said, you were talking about the girl in the car and the thing, and they're driving in the thing, and, you know, they're partying, and the girl who makes out, and the guy, you know, and that ends up happening, and one dies because one's promiscuous. And, a, you know, we expect that in a horror genre slasher film. I expect that from the late 90s and the early 2000s. I forgive you for that. It was different times back in those days. But now let's get with the program here. You know, everybody's wanting to see Annabelle Creations. They want to see the J uh, uh, horror stuff. They want to see something that's new and fresh. They want to see schoolgirls coming out of drains and wet, you know, that go around and touch you and then you with the big and the tree growing out of your mouth or something. That's what people want to see. They don't want to see Leatherface go around chasing some scantily clad girl in her underwear anymore. That was days of the past. Those things are gone. But that does that, and then other things, too, that which makes no sense. But that's that. Let's bury that, okay? That's done and over with. But because it did double the amount that they put into it, they went ahead and went with the sequel, even though this got really bad reviews. It comes out with Leatherface. Leatherface knew what they were doing. Now, this is the prequel. Who's your daddy? 